Right, you can see on your screens a little pointer towards uh, Windsor Castle. That's the Long Walk, which um, goes all the way from the castle over this road and up to a statue of a man on a copper horse, which I think was a past king, but I don't recall which. And we are going into Winter Town, so you will get a proper view of the castle as we go past it. And um, it is quite a popular little centre for uh, cyclists. There's one on my wheel most of the way into Winter who uh, delights in just uh, passing me on the top of the climb there. It's a very small climb anyway. Um, so it's not exactly the most competitive climb you'd ever race up. Um, let's see, three cyclists on the left there, just to prove my point. Now, as I say, we're just coming into town and all the green land on the right is all connected to Windsor Castle, which is a royal residence. The Queen lives there, or any incumbent monarch. Uh, on the left, you see some of the more modern flats that they built over the years uh, that uh, I assume command decent prices. Uh, certainly, if you've got a view of Windsor Castle and all that grass in front of you whilst living in a town, it can't be that bad. Windsor's um, got a mixed up sort of population. It's got some very nice houses. It's got these trendy flats and it still has some terraced um, houses from way back, Victorian times, I should think. So it's kind of mixed. And on top of that, of course, with the Royal Castle, it is an army garrison. It's uh, There's uh, barracks for the uh, guardsmen who guard the castle. I should imagine it's very ceremonial work, like polishing boots and guns and making sure that their hats and uniforms look pristine so that all the tourist pictures come out nicely. In fact, we can see the building right straight ahead of us now is the Victoria Barracks, where the uh, guardsmen reside. See it very walled there. As I say, I doubt if it's uh, got too much in the way of weapons other than the rifles they use uh, when they're marching up and down and guarding the Queen in her castle. In fact, they're there when the Queen's not there as well. So it's um, you know quite a, I suppose, a sight for the tourists and many people staying in London get the coaches out here to uh, see the castle. Now, this little mini roundabout always breaks the climb. Now, if you are doing the race, this is the climb. We're just on it. As you can see, it's very gentle. It's not going to hurt and it's not even high. It's... Um, it's just there at the beginning. Whether or not it shakes up the peloton as we uh, launch out of the long walk start in area, uh, we shall see. But it is the only hill of the day. We're going to be dead flat for the rest of this ride. And we swing left here. You saw a little bit of the castle straight ahead. But just as we swing left, um, you can see we're coming up to a building there with um, some pillars holding it up. Those pillars don't actually touch the roof. Christopher Wren um, built that without pillars and was told that it was unsafe so he put in some pillars that didn't touch the roof just to prove his point but the authorities uh, were satisfied that it got pillars and it was safe now um, it stood there for the thick end of four or five hundred years i should guess without the pillars ever needing to support a building so our man was right the cafe i was talking about is just on the left where that cyclist has pulled in He's um, probably going in there for a coffee, as I say, very popular with cyclists. It is, in fact, in the railway station, the Great Western Railway Station. Uh, Windsor has two. It's a bit of a dead end um, on both lines. That one's a branch line from Slough, and the other one, which is just around the corner from where we are now, uh, comes out of Waterloo, but is the end of the line. So we're going to swing round right here, but that's the river just ahead where those trees are. Uh, we need to go over Eton Bridge into Eton, which we're going to do by swinging a left here. Now, it is all pedestrianised now, uh, but years ago, of course, it was the main route into Windsor before they built a, a nice Swiss dual carriageway to replace it um, on the outskirts of town. Uh, excuse me, doggy. Thank you. So this would have been the main road into Windsor back in the day um, when you drove here from Slough and all the buses, lorries and everything else all crammed down this little road and over this narrow bridge that we're going to go over, which is, I always call it Eaton Bridge. I don't know whether it's Eaton Bridge or Windsor Bridge, but I know which one I call it. And as we cross the river, uh, we will be in Eaton. Eaton is very quaint. It's got this lovely um, uh, high street straight ahead of us, um, as you can partially see but are going to be denied because it's a one-way system. So the part of Eton you're going to see is the bit with all the tradesmen's entrances, the white vans, the garages. There we are, there's a white van for you, a garage. Fantastic. 
and you can travel the world, um, come here and take the photos of that. Look, a nice little block of flats on your right. And what more could you want? This is the real Eton, of course, not the quaint little thing that uh, we've just been diverted away from. Now we're going to swing right here, last of the car parking, and we should find ourselves pretty soon on Eton High Street again to just show you how nice it really is. And it is nice, there's no doubt about it. There's some nice pubs and restaurants and things like that along there uh, to keep you entertained. So this is Eaton High Street again. You can see all the buildings are quite old, nice and everything else. So we would have, in, in the actual race, we're going to go down Eaton High Street. We're not taking that little detour, um, but it is virtual, of course, so we're not breaking any rules. Now, of course, uh, you will see at the bottom of your screen that this is called the Roadworks Edition, and that's because the day was rather ruined by far too many roadworks. In fact, if you watch this and you're watching from abroad, you might think that us Brits are slightly obsessed by roadworks. Um, I would urge you to look at the tarmac on some sections of this road and you'll realise that we are not obsessed by roadworks and probably don't have enough of them. So here we are going past... Uh, you can see the buildings are quite nice and quaint and it's uh, yeah, a nice little place to visit, and especially on a summer's day. So... Uh, you go past a British red telephone box just to make it all authentic. And we're into sort of the college, what I call the college area now. So the buildings we're going to be coming up to now are part of Eton College, which is, of course, a private school um, or a public school, depending on your definition. Uh, but it's certainly a fee paying school. And it is, I believe, provided or educated more British prime ministers than any other school in the land. And certainly two of the last three went here, in Boris Johnson and David Cameron. Uh, and in fact, the, the only one um, spoiling that little run for Eton was Theresa May. And later on, we shall be going through Maidenhead, which is where her constituency is, where the electors elect her into Parliament. So um, the last three Prime Ministers all feature in this race. How about that? So um, this is the back end of Eton. And these are still college buildings, I believe. Uh, but we're going out of that and we're going towards Eton Wick. Now, I really don't know very much about Eton Wick. Um, the only thing I can tell you is that my friend used to run the local football team. That's soccer, if you're on the other side of the Atlantic. Um, beyond that, I know very, very little about it at all. But once we've been through Eton Wick, we shall reach Dorney and Dorney Common, which is always a talking point after a ride. So, just passing under the uh, railway bridge here, this is the Great Western Railway. That uh, This is a small line from Slough, um, just a single line. I think one train runs up and down it from Slough to Windsor. Uh, the reason Windsor isn't on the main line, and Slough is, is because the uh, way back when, when they built the railway in Victorian times, the uh, headmaster of Eton um, thought that steam engines were noisy, smoky, horrible things and didn't want them in his area and blocked the railway building a line to Windsor. This all changed. Um, in fact, this is the uh, road we're going under here, which has replaced the road through Eton into Windsor. So this is the dual carriageway that you'd now take. Um, so the headmaster of Eton blocked the railway of being built some years later he needed to take the whole school up to some exhibition or event in london and realized that the only way to do this was a train so he had to take all the boys from eton up to Slough to get the train realized how marvelous it was and uh, removed his opposition and that little railway was built from Slough to windsor um, and i think windsor probably would have had a better railway station had it um, not been for that opposition from uh, eton college at the time so would you call him a NIMBY? I don't know. Maybe.
So we've just uh, ridden through Eaton Wick and this is Dorney Common. And the reason uh, cyclists uh, always talk about Dorney Common after a ride is that, as you can see, it is very, very open. And just passing the sign here, you'll see that it says it's a 2012 Olympic venue. More of that in a moment. Now, you can see it's very, very exposed here and the wind absolutely whistles across here. And this happened to be a very windy day and you can't really tell from the pictures. And it was very, very hard work getting across here today. Um, as I say, if you're on a group ride, at least you can do a little bit of echelons. And it's usually not too crowded. So you might get away with two or, or maybe three of you doing an echelon across here. Uh, but uh, today, single on my own, it was hard work with a very, very harsh side wing coming from my left. So um, we're probably going to spend an extra 30 seconds or a minute on this stretch of road than I would have probably liked. But uh, it is a great little bit of road and we incorporate it in quite a few rides here. So why is Dorney an Olympic venue? Um, and it's not windsurfing. Uh, there's no sort of segue there. It's in fact rowing and Dorney Lake, which we will be passing, is uh, where they had all the rowing in the 2012 Olympics. And uh, it's certainly, I think, I think the uh, I, I'm not sure I'm not a rowing expert, but I, I, I get the impression that Dorney is the kind of main centre for rowing in the UK. So if there's any rowing enthusiasts out there, they can um, correct me if I'm wrong. In fact, we've got one in the club. So, in fact, we've got two in the club, actually. So I, I, I will probably be uh, scolded by the time the club's had a look at this uh, video. As I say, it's uh, quite a nice little bit of road to cycle, and it's uh, usually quite popular. I mean, there's less cyclists on here today than usual. But, uh, yeah, it's a it's, uh, well-known cut through for cyclists in the area. Um, and, as I say, it is windy and it is testing, uh, perhaps because it's windy. That's why they're not here today, isn't it? Let's uh, apply some logic. So we're coming towards the end of it now. And we, uh, I mean, I felt when I was riding this, as soon as I got past the bushes and into those uh, housed areas, I mean, my speed just went up a little. Um, and it was certainly easier to cycle just out of that headwind. And guess what? Some more roadworks signs. Well, it is the roadworks edition, and there is a reason actually uh, for a lot of these roadworks. Um, as you'll see, as, as the road as the ride evolves, and we're going to go left here. Um, we have to traverse uh, the M4 motorway, which is the main motorway from London uh, westwards towards Bristol, the West Country, and South Wales, and. For some reason, all the bridges along this section are being replaced. So they're building a new bridge alongside all the old bridges. And certainly a week before I recorded this, uh, we happened to be lucky and the uh, road workman was just finishing off uh, the new bridge and the other one was closed. So was, both were shut off. And the workman said, you can be the first people to ride across this uh, bridge. So... Um, it probably wasn't a Strava segment, but had it been, we'd have had all the top places because we'd have been the only people who'd ridden it that day. However, like I say, um, nearly all the bridges along this stretch of motorway are being replaced. Um, 
By the way, that's the entrance to Dorney Lake. The rowing centre is closed at the moment, uh, probably due to COVID, I would imagine. Although I did read the other day it was open. Uh, there is a cycle path that you can ride around it, but I think it's much more for families than for racing. The guy there in a fake QPR shirt. And um, I, I'm told by people that it's not, if you're a road cyclist, you're, you're not really going to want to ride around the lake. But uh, I will go in there and try it one day. Now then, um, we're heading up towards the main A4. So the M4 is the motorway that goes from London to Bristol, but the A4 was the old road that before the 1960s, 70s, uh, everything would have gone down. Um, so when we hit that, we're going to have to ride along the A4 uh, for a little while just to get over Maidenhead Bridge. Uh, and the only reason I put it in the ride is because you, there's – the logistics of getting over rivers, motorways and railways and things is that you have to go over where there's a bridge. And there aren't really um, any bridges I'm aware of between Windsor and Maidenhead. So the only way to get back over was to go up to Maidenhead. So some more roadworks. And this is the one that gave me the most fun of all of this ride. Because when I got to this, as I said, they are replacing all the bridges over the M4 and so far, I've managed to get over all of them when I've ridden around them, um, except for this one, because this one truly didn't even have a little cycle path or a footpath over it, like most of them do. And there were no workmen there. This one was fully shut off. So I had to do this great big detour. And uh, this is, I rode around to the other side of the bridge, and this is coming down the other side of that bridge. Um, the detour was loads and loads of fun. It involved riding along the side of the motorway, uh, going down some very, very steep steps, carrying my bike, riding along, well, walking along, pushing the bike along a pontoon that was built into the river, and apart from that, going along gravel river paths. But I got back, and that was the, um, as I say, probably missed out 100 metres or so um, of going over that bridge. I don't think the bridge will show up too much on the uh, rgt race uh, the rgt race is almost flat as you can see from everything we've um shown you so far fantastic look some more bollards in the road i think these are the uh british telecom guys laying uh cables probably to make your internet better for rgt racing i would imagine you see it's uh, there is some benefit in all this you can see from the tarmac and the road surface there that uh there's clearly not enough roadworks in some parts of Britain, but uh, anyway, there we go, over the motorway. Um, no, it's not over the motorway, that must be, uh, maybe that's a river, I didn't see. So, um, as I say, we're coming up to the A4, which is the uh, main road between London, Bristol and the West, or would have been before the, uh, before the motorways, uh, water routes, highways, whatever you want to call them, were built. So here we are on the A4, the main road from London to the west, um, or the old road from London to the west, replaced by, of course, the motorway. And we're turning left 
towards Maidenhead. Now, this is Taplow, and um, for years and years and years, I thought this was Taplow. Um, it is Taplow, but in fact, um, the, the original Taplow is a little village that's uh, to our right, probably half a mile up the hill, uh, and it's very pretty indeed. And I suppose most people just think this is Taplow because it's where the main road goes rather than the original old village. There's also Taplow House on the right, which is rather a nice grand hotel in some uh, big grounds. Very nice it is too. So um, just before we go into Maidenhead, uh, we are going to go under the railway line, which is on our right. You can see the gantries just on our right up there for the trains, and there's a train going along. It's all it's all uh, well planned this to make sure the road you know we fit in with the railway timetables. And we go under the bridge here. This is, of course, the Great Western Railway, which again goes from London to the west. Everything here heads west. Um, everything's built along the A4, uh, the railway, and, and so on and so forth, and latterly the motorway. So we go under the uh, Great Western Railway, and although we're not quite in Maidenhead, I always think this is uh, when you start hitting what I call Maidenhead territory. The uh, We are still strictly in Tatplow, and... Um, we quite often come out here um, from one of the roads on our right. Uh, there's a fantastic little climb up the uh, side of the Thames Valley because everything here is running alongside the River Thames as well. So this is the bottom of the Thames Valley, which is why the roads are all flat, because we're just basically following the River Valley. And the whole of the race, apart from that little hill over Windsor Castle, is flat uh, because it's following the river. But of course, you know, rivers are in valleys and if you go to the right, you will go up a hill up towards Burnham um, into Buckinghamshire. And we ride up those hills and uh, as I say, we will drop into onto this road uh, from those hills up up there in the Chilterns and Burnham Beaches, etc. So as we pile into Maidenhead, uh, we're going to go over Maidenhead Bridge. And this is just coming up, I should imagine. This is, you see the white building ahead. Um, this is a new development which I have some sort of um, taken away. It's, it's a nostalgic spot, shall I say, for me. Um, there was a nightclub there that uh, was particularly good um, way, way along too many decades ago to a reference. But uh, anyone in jazz funk might uh, might remember it. It was a Skindles Hotel. It's also famous, um, I think it was very uh, where the upper classes used to sort of have secret affairs. Uh, very famous for um, being a hotel that was very discreet and so people had their affairs there. That was on the right, um, but as I say, I think it's gone. I don't know if they preserved any of it. It would be a shame if they haven't because it was a lovely setting along the river uh, there. Now, we're getting held up here by some cyclists, so um, we can't complain, can we? Because it's our fellow cyclists holding up all this traffic queue. Uh, you can see the little yellow jersey uh, in the left, when I say yellow jersey, perhaps it's uh, a high-vis gilet rather than a yellow jersey in the sense of Tour de France. Right, they've all gone round to the right, up towards Cookham, which is a beautiful ride. Uh, it's one I quite enjoy doing. That's a nice little road to cycle along. Even though it's busy with tra it's relatively busy with traffic, it it's okay to ride. And Cookham um, leads you to some very nice cycling areas as well. So we're still on the A4. I don't want to stay on this too long and we're not going to go right into town uh, because we want to turn left and go towards Bray, uh, going under the railway again. And basically, once we pass Bray, we're going to sort of switch out towards Monkey Island and the finish uh, is shortly after Bray. Bray is a very well-to-do little village and it punches well above its weight and we shall talk about that a little bit later when we reach there. Now we're turning left in amongst all these new apartments in Maidenhead, very, very swish these days, much nicer than I recall it uh, back in the day. As I was saying earlier, Maidenhead is uh, Theresa May's constituency. This is where the electorate vote for Theresa May, the previous Prime Minister. Um, but even worse than that, it is also the town that had the very first of Mike Ashley's JD Sports Shops. So you can blame Maidenhead for that one. Um, goodness knows. Newcastle United fans still upset with him? I can't remember. But uh, anyway, Mike Ashley started his career with a sports shop in Maidenhead.
enjoying some more roadworks before we get into Bray. And that is a very rare sight. There's actually some people doing some work on the roadworks. Usually you just see the bollards, the vans and a hole in the road. But there we are, two blokes carrying something across the road. It's probably the sandwiches and the uh, coffee, but uh, nevertheless, some activity. So here we are into Bray, um, which punches above its way. It's got two Michelin-styled restaurants. There's one of them, the Fat Duck. That's Heston Blue, Blumenthal's. Um, Michelle Rue has one called the Waterside as well. So small village with two Michelin-styled restaurants. Um, I should have turned left there, so I've missed the turning. Um, but what we'll do, we'll take the next turning on the left and rejoin the road we should have gone. You can see a bit more of Bray that way, can't you? And in fact, that is Bray Village Hall, from which uh, the recent edition of Windsor Chester Windsor, which is a 600 uh, kilometre and uh was run from. And in fact, anybody who knows anything about Audax cycling, uh, in the UK at least, will know that the very first 600 was Windsor Chester Windsor. It was set up to enable British riders to qualify for Parry Brest Parry. And uh, I think in the old days when it was first started, it went on a different route, of course, because there was less traffic and things like that those days. But it was revived uh, recently and there have been two or three editions of Windsor Chester Windsor, which is Britain's first 600 kilometre Audax, as I say, all set up to allow us to qualify for Parry Breast Parry, which I've done twice. And I think I've done Windsor Chester Windsor twice as well. Now, we're heading down towards the finish, and um, I have to say, I'm not that familiar with this road. It's in an area around Monkey Island, which is an island in the middle of the River Thames, but we're still dead flat. Uh, it's difficult to say much for uh, to the riders about you know what to, how, how to plot this race um, when you do it virtually online, because it's just going to be flat apart from that hill uh, at the beginning of Windsor, which is not difficult in itself. Uh, but if you can get some splits in Windsor, then basically you'll probably be riding groups all the way to this finish. This is a fairly straight finish. Uh, obviously, virtually, you're not going to have the uh, tarmac and conditions. As I say, this was a very, very windy day. It was quite hard riding a lot of this um, because I didn't get much tailwind because of the direction I'd done it in. But 
I was treated to lots and lots of roadworks, and here is another set. In fact, this is one of these bridges that they're replacing across the motorway, so we've traversed the motorway um, a couple of times, and we're now going back uh, southwards. But this one's nearly finished, and at least it's open, and some very, very smooth tile, mate. You can see off to the left where the old bridge would have been that they've taken out, and this is the new bridge that we're going up with some very smooth tarmac. If I'd known what was coming next, I would have actually just slowed down and enjoyed this tarmac, but uh, I didn't. I just uh, decided to get over it and um, assume that I was going to get treated to uh, some more, but not, not to be, not to be. Now then, And so we come down this. So we're out of Bray now. Um, I'd say Bray, uh, uh, I, I'm not sure whether the finish is still technically in Bray. It probably isn't. But I've called the race Windsor Eaton Bray. Uh, that's the main, last main place we go through. As I say, it's got two Michelin stars restaurants. The Fat Duck, uh, run by um, Heston Blumenthal. Uh, I've no idea how nice it is. But I will say that I went to a restaurant in Belgium where the chef had trained under him and it was fantastic and I will say it's the best restaurant I've ever been to. So if that's the sort of trainee that Heston Blumenthal's uh, chucking out, I think the fat duck must be quite good. Anyway, uh, we're band back to the uh, cycling. Um, of course, there was a Belgian connection there and we know that in these races, the Belgians do quite well. In fact, it is, as far as I'm concerned, the number one nation for cycling in the world. Yeah, I hope I don't insult anybody else from any other country, but uh, no, Belgium um, really does have a rich heritage in cycling. So we're into the final throws of this, and um, when I talk about Belgian connections, there's a bit of uh, road surface coming up that reminds me distinctly of Belgium, because it's built with those um, oblong sort of concrete squares. Uh, if you've ever ridden, driven around Belgium enough, You'll have come across them somewhere. I don't know um, if there's less these days than there used to be, but if, you've, uh, if you're familiar with Belgium, you'll know what I mean. But there's certain streets there where they uh, basically made the road surface out of sort of oblong blocks of concrete. Um, I'm sure they lay them, but they lay them in these oblong blocks. And this road's exactly like that uh, in a moment. So, you know, it kind of had that Belgian feel to it right at the end, or at least uh, it did to me. Now, having predicted it, here it is. This is it. So you can see every, uh, you can see all the little lines there where these uh, segments are uh, laid. And of course, you go -dum over every little uh, join. As I say, very, always reminds me of Belgium, something like this. But of course, you know, if you think that's bad, then you get to the next bit where they've tried to tarmac it over the top uh, to smooth it out. But then when the tarmac's eroded, they haven't bothered repairing it. So this section now, you get rough bits of tarmac that haven't worn out, as well as the little bumps. Um, like I say, if you actually ride the virtual race, you're going to experience none of this. But uh, as I say, I wouldn't have fancied sprinting uh, to the finish over this. But near the finish we are. So thank you very much for watching. That was Windsor, Eaton, Bray. Um, I think it's quite a nice little part of Britain. It's not that scenic because it's uh, so close to London, but it has some heritage. And you can see places like Eaton High Street, Windsor Castle and Bray Village um, have still got some of that old English charm. Thanks for watching.